Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and I'm here to uh, give you a demo uh, related to our continuously integrated data center story, which includes a lot of interesting technology. These are the demos that go with our bootstrapping data centers at the Edge and Enterprise presentation, uh, which I strongly recommend you check out. This is designed to be the supporting demos where we uh, break down exactly what the story is and show you how to do it and replicate this experience for yourself. I strongly recommend before you watch these demos, check out this presentation. We talk about the theory and the why and how we build all these things together. It's a great way to, to ground you. Check in the notes, of course, and then the link is right here also. This is actually a nine chapter demo. Don't worry, uh, we're not doing all of that in this session. Uh, in this session, we are just gonna look at some high level context and then I'll do future videos that will break down each one of these steps so that you can see them in more detail. Uh, in this case, we're doing the bootstrap with context component of the system. And we have another demo that does the CICD summary pieces. I strongly recommend you start with the CICD summary. So this hopefully is your third video in the series. Um, and then and you're now seeing how we built CICD. And I'm gonna work with that assumption in mind. Although in this video, we're actually gonna set the system up from scratch. And what that means is we're gonna go through the stage one install, which is literally building up the server, installing DRP on it in automated fashion, setting up the, the libraries and contexts and things like that. That's all automated, automated script. And so is the process by which we bring up the managed servers that are all attached to that and install digital rebar in each one of those four data centers. So that process is completely automated. It uses our context system, which then calls Terraform and then builds the infrastructure in, uh, in this case, Linode is the example we're using because we want to be able to spin up infrastructure really quickly. So while Digital Rebar and RackN focus on physical infrastructure, everything I'm doing is actually leveraging virtual infrastructure. Um, the tool is incredibly powerful and flexible. And so um, we can take advantage of all sorts of infrastructure and manage it. Um, pretty groundbreaking ways. And then from there, once those are set up uh, and we've established the correct code and versioning infrastructure at each site, we will then build a full data center under each one of those uh, digital rebar endpoints uh, so that we can then install Kubernetes. So that is the full demo. Uh, end to end, it, the demo can be done in about 30 minutes. We're gonna take a little bit of time to explain what's going on and show you uh, how it happens in this video. We're really gonna to get to this stage and then hand off to the other video, or hopefully you've already seen it. And we started at that point and you're moving forward. We'll come back to this uh, as we go. Hopefully that'll be a, a, a good basis for you to see how the system is running. And just get a couple things queued up. First, I wanna tell you that the scripts that we're about to run are all uh, in a rack and multi-site demo GitHub. Uh, you happy to read it, look at it, see how we're doing it. Um, this is all delivered technology, so you can replicate this experience. Um, there's a lot of learnings in here, so if you're building multi-site automation, this is actually designed, especially the smaller chapter units, as tutorials. I don't have time in, in this uh, video to discuss everything about that. Uh, so to start it off, I have a command line, and I'm just going to run the manager code here, and that is going to call Terraform to create a server in Linode. Linode has a cloud init script that we use, they call it a stack script, that will install digital rebar. Uh, and I will show you some of those things working in the background. I'm gonna monitor that out of the corner of my eye over here. And we're gonna actually jump over to Linode and we will see that script starting. Uh, it's gonna take a couple of seconds and I'm gonna monitor it. Actually, here we will bring up a console. And once it starts going, um, we'll actually see the script running and, and watch it do the install. So. I'll bring that back up in a moment. The actual script over here basically goes through the process, right? We were knitting the system, but we're actually building a catalog. We're downloading the catalog from the internet. We are pulling down our install components, um, which are necessary if we want to set up digital rebar um, from digital rebar. So that makes, or at least it's faster and easier if we do that. Here's the stack scripts actually starting up. This is the digital rebar install running um, from that script. So it's going through and installing digital rebar for us. As soon as that is up, the system is going to then start 
actually installing things using calling digital rebar CLI to install catalog items and basically bring up all of the components for the infrastructure. Uh, completely automated, it's actually gonna build default workflows, install the plugins that we need. Um, it's actually gonna update the catalog, so it's gonna go to RackN's catalog and it's gonna pull in all of the components and infrastructure that's necessary, then provision the downstream systems. It's a completely self-contained infrastructure here. Um, and so let me show you that we're, we literally just kicked into that. And so over here, we are doing those uploads. Uh, so the entire system, and this is really important for how we operate, is scripted and scriptable so that you don't have to have any manual intervention. And that's an important part of this demo for us is that we are actually able to build complete infrastructures without any human touch at all. Uh, the only human touch I'm doing here is really to show you what the demo would look like. And even then, it's, it's pretty minimal. Uh, at this point though, we do have the system up enough that I can log into it, actually well past that point. Let me find the IP address, here we go. So we're gonna open this link in here, I have to accept the certificate. Of course, we're using self-signed certificates over here. Um, and I am going to switch over to this. This is actually a tip UX that has uh, one or two new features in it that make my life easier, so I'm gonna include them. Uh, and then over here, I have to reset so that we get a fresh token. I'm gonna log in. And what, what you'll see in here is that we have a standard uh, install. We have a whole bunch of components that are installed. Things are ready to go. Um, at this point, we have a bootstrapping machine. So we created a machine. There's, there's no actual machine here. It's just running, actually it's running on the endpoint and it's installing Docker. So in this case, it's already run through that process. It's reached uh, the complete stage. And so from that perspective uh, over here, it's now actually starting to spin up new machines. Uh, we're we're going to wait for that to happen in the, in the background. You'll see it here. The bootstrap is, is really nice because it means that we can use a digital rebar workflow to actually install things on the host to make it, make it be able to then do additional bootstrapping. So in this case, we're using the contexts uh, which allow us to have a phantom machine to that we can then run Terraform against. And that will then spin up, um, use Terraform Apply to create machines that we can then run actual workflows against. One of the amazing things about context here is that this is, we don't have a machine, we have no machine, it doesn't exist. We create a proxy machine in a container, run Terraform scripts to build an actual machine, and then we're gonna transfer control to the machine so that we can finish the install. Um, super powerful from that perspective. And then when we expand the script, we're gonna go back to Terraform on the endpoint at the manager to expand the system in Linode. And those machines will then check in to the endpoints individually. Um, literally building a four data center cluster um, uh, infrastructure in this case. Uh, so from that point, if I was to check in on the task here, let me actually go into the jobs log for the system. So in this case, what you can see is we have some Terraform applies running. These are actually creating those sites for us. And you can see that we're bouncing. This is something running in the system itself. And these are things running in Terraform. These are things running in the runner. Uh, at this point, I should actually have the machines up. Here they are. So these machines were added by the script automatically. And then they were told to run Terraform create. That means in Linode over here, we've run that. And in this case, when the system is created, we are not telling it to install digital rebar. We're just telling it to attach to this digital rebar instance. So they're basically coming up as, as generic machines. Um, and they're right now waiting for the Linode systems to come go through their boot cycles. Let me show you what that looks like. So console here. So in this console, um, it looks like we're already here. It's waiting for the digital rebar agents to start. It's gone through the whole process and joined in. And we're literally just waiting for the, that check-in. Uh, actually, it's already happened uh, in the background. So that check-in is going, digital rebar is being installed. It's already completed in one of these data centers. Over here, it's running that digital rebar install. One of the things that's fascinating to me is when we do the digital rebar install this way, it's actually much, much faster. Uh, it looks like 
so two of them did not work. So you can see how quickly we're going through these install processes. We'll get a little bit of troubleshooting. Maybe not. No, it's just completing. I don't know why we're seeing a history of any failures at all because apparently it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Uh, my script over here is just telling me that now that the digital rebar endpoints are up, it's actually adding the endpoints for the system. Okay, good. So all of our sites have been created. They have completed. If I go over to my jobs log now, you will see um, basically it's all green lights. And if I wanted to, I could check out one of my, um, let's see, workflows. Where's my site create workflow? And interesting thing about the site create workflows is I can actually come over here and I can do an analysis. This is a standard feature in Digital Rebar. And I can see in that how long different things take. Um, and I can actually tell you uh, specifically 42 seconds, looks like. Uh, no, at 42 seconds, it took 20 seconds to install Digital Rebar in this. So super fast. Uh, most of the wait time in building this system up has actually been waiting for Linode to provision a server, which is typical for, even for physical environments. That's what we're waiting on. Um, and uh, in the chapters, when we dive into each chapter, we'll go into exactly how these things are doing it and what's going on. That's, that's a whole 15 minute discussion on its own. I'm trying to just show you how these infrastructures get built out sort of in a, in a fast way so that you can see what we've built. Um, so in this case, now we have uh, built the system out so that I have digital rebar infrastructure built in four data centers provisioned across the US, so central US, east, west. Uh, and every one of those is a running digital rebar endpoint. And what we've been able to do is have the system then register those, those digital rebar components as endpoints. So I have the manager that's running a digital rebar system. And then I have the four data centers. Uh, each one of these, if I had gone in, I just I had a, did an API call instead of doing it by hand, I could have put in their IP address, gone in and, and registered them. And it actually brought in a very simple digital rebar. It's using this older version that I have uh, cached on my system. So it's a 410 system, didn't it use that cache? And if I jump into that system over here, let me log in what you'll see is it's literally an empty digital rebar. So there's no default workflow. It's that older version. None of the work has been done. There's no, no plugins or content. I couldn't boot anything if I wanted. It's, it's completely empty. If I was in the catalog over here, you would see that um, I don't have anything actually installed except digital rebar. And so if I came back in and said, you know what, I think I want to install some components here. Let me actually This is, uh, it used the local catalog as a starting point. I just hit refresh to uh, pull in the, the community catalog. And so if I was to go in and say, all right, I'm actually gonna install some pieces. I'll take the community core, but I'll take an older version. That looks great. And maybe uh, throw in a core OS component here and maybe a rancher component. So in this case, I'm, I'm doing what you don't wanna do, uh, obviously to illustrate a point is I'm installing things on these endpoints. We want these endpoints to be conformed to a standard, which means we, want, we don't want somebody who's clicking around and adding something uh, into the system. We wanna be able to say, no, 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 we have complete production control of the system and we want it conformed. And let me show you what that looks like. So in this case, we have a couple of things that we need to do. Um, First is I actually need to get control of the manager itself. Uh, and so to do that, I wanna actually set, set up its profile. So the manager uh, profile should have the credential, should have the license. Notice these are layered things. So the credentials to run the system, the licenses to run the system, the manager itself, I don't wanna change anything, so I'm gonna tell it to ignore it. And then I do want to have the site base information. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and uh, set things up at a 411 level. And if I do these things, I can come back in and I have to apply them to the system. There we go. Oops. 
jumping steps. Um, what happens is when I apply those version sets into the system, it actually builds a queue of work that says I need to have this work done in order for my system to come up to speed. So I know that I'm going to add or update digital rebar. I'm going to add or update the task library, right? None of these things are actually in the catalog of, actually these are, but it's going to patch them to the correct level. Um, and you can actually see what's going on and what all the pieces are. Um, it's also going to come in, it's telling me right now everything is, I need my, de my demo cluster count to be three. Uh, so one of the things that I would want to do in this case is actually add in cluster demo, my cluster count, and that'll actually create a new layer in which we're going to also have that setting done. So if I release this to go, now it's going to go ahead and apply all of those changes into the system. Uh, first thing it's going to do when it does that is it's going to upgrade digital rebar. So we're going to have to, right now it's at 411, this is going to change it to 412 and we will lose connectivity while it does that, obviously, because it's literally replacing its own executable. Not a problem, it'll bounce through that. That is a feature of digital rebar to be able to upgrade itself uh, in part for this type of maintenance function. And we are just waiting for it to complete that operation. Let me see if I can drill in, I can. Uh, so from here, oh yeah, I messed up my version sets. Let's go back in. I actually want to apply all of these version sets. Let's see where we get, there we go, much better. Um, and since it's on apply, as soon as that change is made, it's gonna go ahead and start trying to make those changes for me. Over in the logs, it's going to tell me a whole, what's going on. In this case, uh, normally these aren't errors. This is just logging information. We've we've extended it to alerts to make it easier so that it would show up in our in our logging. This is not way the way you configure a production system. It's just an easier de debug and troubleshoot in this case for us to get uh, standard alerts uh, from the system in a management uh, demo. So in this case, uh, I'm back to machines. I wanna go into versions. We're waiting for the system to finish this process. You'll notice it's already updated to version 4.1.2, so I'm not gonna lose connectivity again. If I check out my version sets, these are actually things that are in the multi-site demo. So everything I'm showing you here as part of multi-site, we actually have the version sets predefined. So I know exactly what these pieces and parts are. If I wanted to look at the uh, version set, I can actually see Different, different components that are set to different versions. Uh, one other thing to point out while I'm waiting for the uh, system to synchronize is that part of building the catalog meant that we collected all of the information that we needed in the file server that's part of Digital Rebar. So the rack and uh, the catalog, one of the things that that startup script does is it actually copies all of the components into the system. So this is our Kubernetes installer and all three relevant versions for us are actually stored. And if we added new versions, they would get added to this catalog. This means that we're not relying on the internet for synchronizing the system. So the synchronization actually comes from the connection from the manager and it actually manages those components. The other thing to show you in the file system is uh, the bootstrapping. So this is actually the install pieces. Uh, same thing is true with licenses and the Terraform states. <coughs> so now let's check in on endpoints and see where we are. Yeah, we're still waiting for it to catch up on, oh, not being told to apply, so let's let it do that. <laughs> so while we're, while that's going on, uh, I want to go ahead and do uh, the updates for these other systems. So in this case, we still need credential, license, site base. We don't need the cluster information or the manager. We just need these, these components on all of the other sites. Uh, we are being told not to apply, so it's not going to automatically start doing the upgrades. But when I go ahead and do the patch here, huh. all right. 
explains why I'm not getting the refreshes automatically. So part of the upgrade, um, I was still talking to the system because my token was valid, but um, my, my sessions were, were not, which is why I wasn't getting live updates. Um, finally told me, hey, you have to log in and, and update, which I've, which I've now done. Um, and so now what you can see in the system is that request I had is telling me I need to do a whole bunch of ads, but those things that I had added, we are removing. Uh, that, then I have some settings that I have to get done. Those, so the US Central, because we were on that site, changed it. Um, so we can actually come in and see exactly what's gonna happen, get a list of the activity that's going on. Uh, and if I jump over here and turn on the uh, system, Good, we're connected, we're gonna watch for events, and I will go ahead and apply these changes to all these systems so that we can get, get the process rolling. This is literally push, it's gonna upgrade digital rebar on all the sites in parallel, and then it'll synchronize the content so we have exactly the right content on all the systems based on what these version sets are. And since each version set is, is different, you could actually layer your description of your system. So different data centers, different sites, uh, different versions could actually be layered together to create a single uh, version. And by having apply or not apply, uh, we can control whether or not those sites are gonna be automatically patched or upgraded as part of the process. So now if I jump back over to here, we lost connection, which you would expect because we're doing an upgrade. And now it's going through and it's creating all of the infrastructure and making those changes to the systems. So let me refresh here, make sure I have access. And if I come over and check out the catalog here and go to install, you'll see it's removed the things I'm not supposed to have and it's added all the things I am supposed to have, uh, including some custom content that is only, only used in this demo. Uh, so it's a mix of, of, a, you know, of a management system where I actually am pushing down exactly the pieces and parts that I need. Um, in the next demo, in, in, in the second chapter, hopefully you've already seen that, but we're actually going to start modifying this and changing the versions around it as part of the infrastructure. Uh, in this case, I don't have any machines yet. This is an empty DRP, but all this work is necessary so that I can actually do the work, do the upgrades, installs, and expand the site. Um, basically it's prepping digital rebar for the work. So think of this as bringing up an edge site, making sure that all the content is right, making sure that you can boot machines and profile them and configure them and make sure the BIOS and the RAID and the config, all this, all the stuff is done. That's what we've done. We've literally taken a generic undifferentiated digital rebar that we installed basically from a USB key and then connected to it and then conformed it to be exactly what our system should be. We've remove things that shouldn't be there. We've added the pieces that we need and that we're under control with. And we've also conformed it to exactly the right version so we know uh, precisely what's in there. If we want to move things forward or backwards, which we'll show in the next video, uh, we can do exactly that, that process. And at this point, we are ready to go. So the next step for me is to expand the sites, which is where the next video um, is going to pick up. Whew, we covered a lot of material. Let me briefly review it just to make sure that, that we're all on the same page of, of what we've done. So in this case, what we've, what we've got here is we used an automated script to build a Linode uh, server that automatically installed Digital Rebar. Once that was, in, once that was um, running, we then used the CLI and an automated script to upload all of the content, plugins, and requirements to do that. Then we actually use that system to install, to bootstrap itself to run Docker. And then we use Terraform to then expand out the digital rebar sites. That Terraform site just basically told Linode to start the servers. When, they, when their agents checked back into the master digital rebar, the manager, it then instructed them to do a normal workflow to install digital rebar on those four sites. Next step is actually gonna to be to, to use Terraform again to install a whole range of servers, each one attached to each individual site. Whew, that's a lot of stuff that we automated um, in just a couple of minutes. So I hope this was helpful. Um, please, please, if you have questions, ask us, uh, join us in the community. We are always happy to help with that. Stay tuned because every one of these steps, I'm gonna break down into even more detailed videos 
show you exactly how I did it so that you can replicate these steps yourself. Uh, thank you very much. This is Rob Hirschfeld signing out.